हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम सुनील कुमार पीजीटी कॉमर्स केंद्रीय विद्यालय सेक्रेट आर के पुरम लेट मी टेक यू टू द अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ बिजनेस स्टडीज क्लास ट्वेल्व इन आर प्रीवियस एपिसोड वी हैव स्टडीड द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट इट्स मीनिंग एंड द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ जनरल मैनेजमेंट नाउ टूडे वी विल कंटिन्यू विद द सेम टॉपिक प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट आर टूडे इज टॉपिक is what is scientific management its principles and techniques of scientific management now the meaning of scientific management scientific management implies the application of science to management it means conducting business activities according to standardized tools methods and trained personnel in order to increase the output improve its quality and reduce the cost and wastes according to mr f w taylor who is the father of scientific management scientific management means knowing exactly what you want your man to do and seeing that they do it in the best and in the cheapest way so it is very much clear what mr taylor says he says that whenever an employee is employed before asking him to start the job he must be given proper training and from the very first day he will be working the way he is working years on that particular post because according to him there is no way and chance for trial and error method no time will be given to the employee to settle down rather from the very first day he has to give his level best and only then the business will be able to increase its overall production now let we have the principles of scientific management the first principle of scientific management is science not rule of thumb you may be thinking what type of thumb we are talking of here it's not the thumb what you are having it's a thumb it means no traditional methods will be followed in the business organization the old technology will be replaced with the modern technology the modern technology which brings efficiency and effectiveness and helps in the increase of production and the main idea of mr taylor was only and only to emphasize on the need of increasing the production he insists that each job performed in the organization should be based on scientific inquiry and not on intuition experience hit and miss method so from the very first day as i mentioned earlier the person has to give his level best a second principle of scientific management is harmony not discord taylor says that those who work together in an organization must work in harmony that is with mutual give and take and proper understanding he insisted on mental revolution mental revolution means we should leave our old mentality of leaving the work or avoiding the work rather we should accept the work as and when it comes we must focus on our career and do our daily activities to the best of our knowledge and ability so here in order to have good relationship between the employees and the employer or the management we need to have good relationship between these two Our next principle is cooperation not individualism. It's very much clear that in an organization when people are working in groups unless they are having cooperation it's almost impossible for them to complete the task because one task is not completed by a particular person it is completed by a group of persons and when all are working together all are having the feeling of comradeship companionship then certainly they will be able to complete the task without wasting much of the time and the cost here we have to understand that any work in the organization must be carried on in cooperation with each other as i mentioned right now management must tell workers in confidence before setting up standards of task 
then workers will try their best to achieve it. So here, the main emphasis will be only and only on good relationship between the employer and the employee. Now, our next principle of scientific management is development of workers to their greatest efficiency and prosperity. Workers' efficiency depends upon proper training and their selection. Taylor insisted on due care should be taken while selecting the employees and after that they must be sent for training from time to time to update their knowledge. So here the idea is very much clear that employees must be given training from time to time. As we all know that world is ever changing. The person who is having knowledge to the best may not be having the best after five years because of change taking place every day. So the person has to update his knowledge accordingly and only then he will remain at the top. And scientific management aims at overall development of the workers. Whatever ability or the talent they are having, they must get it to get it for their better future. Now students, we have come to an end of the principles of scientific management. These principles are typically relating to the factory. Now, let me discuss the techniques of scientific management. In order to achieve the desired results, through the introduction of scientific management techniques, of work studies, standardization, administrative reorganization, and scientific rate setting should be adopted. Students, we have four techniques of scientific management. The first, work studies. Second, standardization and simplification of work. Third, administrative reorganization. Fourth, scientific rate setting or you can say differential piece based system. Now, the first, work studies. Work studies are divided into four parts. The first part is method study. The main of the method study is to find out the best method of doing the work. The method is said to be the best if it brings down all the cost of the organization and helps in the increasing of profits of the business organization. Here, we have to emphasize on the need that whatever methods are available in the organization. The management must observe and analyze each and every method and the method which is the cheapest and the best should be adopted. A second study is motion study. The main aim of motion study is to eliminate unproductive or unnecessary movements so that it takes less time to complete the job efficiently. Here, let me give you an example of Mr. F. W. Taylor. When he was working in Bethamil Steel Company, he found that workers are working in the organization, but the production is remaining the same. Then he thought a lot and then he decided to conduct a research on the movements which are taking place in the plant. He installed a video camera and captured all the activities of the employees when they were working on the machines. After that, he analyzed each and every activity and then found out unnecessary motions. Then he called his all the employees and asked them to remove those movements when they are working on the machines. Now students, you must be thinking what happened. The production was increased around 70% and then this study was propounded that whatever motions are performed by the employees these must be cut down to the minimum so as to increase the overall production of the business organization. Now let we have our third study that is time study. It determines the standard time to complete a task. The standard time is fixed after taking several readings or observations. For example, Mr. Taylor used a stopwatch and asked his 500 employees to come and complete the task. He noted down the time taken by an employee in completing the task. And after taking the observation of all the 500 employees, he divided it to 500 
and then the average time was ensured. And then Mr. Taylor asked his employees to complete the task according to that time because this is the time which is not set because of the top level of employee. The time which is taken by the employee and he asked all the employees to complete the task within the standard time. The standard time is not taken or adjusted according to the person who is best in doing the work. The time was set for an average employee. And then he asked his employees to complete the task in that time frame. And again, the results were increasing. The production of the factory was increased. Students, let we have our fourth study, that is fatigue study. Fatigue study aims at determining the amount and frequency of rest intervals in completing a task. Main causes of fatigue study are working hours, doing unsuitable work, bad working conditions, etc. Taylor observed that the persons who are working in the organization, sometimes they are not giving their best. The reason was evident. They were asked to do the work on a regular basis. And we know the stamina of each and every person is different. Those who are very strong, they get tired after say three hours or the four hours and those who are having average stamina, they may get tired after one and a half hour. So what Mr. Taylor did, he recognized the time intervals that should be given to the employees so that they will come recharged and they will perform the work to the perfection. And for that, he conducted a study. He asked the employees to work eight hours continuously. And then he asked them to work two hours and then a rest interval of 10 minutes are given to them. Students, what do you feel like when the production of the factory will be more? When they are asked to do the work for eight hours or now they are working for less than eight hours? Yes, you are right. When the time intervals are given to them, they feel energized. They come with full energy and they give their level best. And in this way, the overall production of the factory was increased. Students, our next technique of scientific management is standardization and simplification of work. Standardization refers to the process of setting standards for each business activity. For example, product, raw material, machine, and methods. It means that we have to set the standard and everything should be according to that standard only. If you find the quality of the product is not coming up to a particular standard, the revision will take place. The raw material will be changed. And then ultimately you will find the business is producing a product having the supreme quality and the customers will be satisfied to the maximum. Here, simplification means eliminating unnecessary diversity of products. It means to remove completely all the hurdles which are coming on the way of the employees. Here, we have to simplify the work to the maximum so that the employees will be getting the task and they will be completing it with ease. That helps in efficiency and effectiveness. Our next technique of scientific management is administrative reorganization. Administrative reorganization advocated functional foremanship. It is an extension of the principle of division of labor. Functional foremanship aims at specialization. Taylor proposes eight specialists at factory and the office level. At factory level, he proposes speed boss, gang boss, repair boss, and inspectors. Whereas the speed boss will ensure the speed of the work. In planning, we have decided that within what time frame the work should be completed. It is the task of the speed boss to ensure that the task is completed within the stipulated time period. Next, the gang boss. Gang boss ensures each and everything in the organization. He ensures that all the machines are working properly, all the employees are there in the organization, 
all are working their allotted places so he basically he is the head of the factory and ensures the smooth execution of the work the third is repair boss repair boss is given the task to give oils or doing repairing to the machines when the machines are working if during the course of production if machines there is overhauling then it is the responsibility of the repair boss to give repair to that particular machinery so he has to ensure that all the machinery and the plant installed are working in a proper way next we are having inspectors you must have understood the meaning of inspectors inspectors are the one who are given the responsibility to have a check on the quality of the products which are produced he has to ensure that in planning function we have set some standard for the quality and he will ensure that the same type of quality is there in the products which are produced right now students this administrative reorganization has two parts the first we have completed now the second part is at office level at office level tailor suggested there should be instruction card clerk route clerk time and cost clerk and disciplinarian the first instruction card clerk will issue instructions to the employees who are coming in the organization there may be a system in the organization that a person is working on a particular machinery on a particular day but works another day on another machinery so instruction card clerk issues the instructions that on which machine that particular employee has to work on a particular day if there are some changes in the method of the production then he is the responsibility of telling him how to do the work our second person working at office level is root clerk the root clerk is given the responsibility of telling the employees that which route they should follow in completing the task in manufacturing organizations say in car manufacturing companies there is a pro particular process that the production has to go for the first stage the second stage the third stage and the fourth stage so there may be the change in the way and the root clerk has to ensure that the proper route is followed on a particular day in completing the activities of the organization the third person who will be working at the office level is time and cost clerk the time clerk will ensure that at office level whatever targets are set to complete in a particular time schedule he will ensure the time is taken and considered for completion of a particular job he is given the responsibility of having a watch all the time on the cost he has to compare the cost which is actually incurring and the cost which was planned earlier so his task is basically to stuck to the time and the cost which was given to him as a standard and he has to ensure everything accordingly last but not the least is disciplinarian disciplinarian is the one who has to maintain discipline in the office he has to ensure that all the instructions are given to them and they are following blindly religiously what are given to them by their superiors so his task is to ensure that discipline is maintained in the organization and if the discipline is maintained certainly whatever targets are set in at the planning level will certainly be achieved now students we have come to an end of this chapter in this chapter we have studied the meaning of principles of management the principles of general management given by mr henry fuel the meaning of scientific management and the principles given by mr f w taylor and lastly the techniques of scientific management now students get ready to get more sensation when we will be starting our next chapter that is business environment and it is directly relating to the daily life whatever you are reading in newspapers or you are watching television or you are getting the news business news all will be there so wait for the next episode thank you